All right, day 15 recap, Camino day 15. We're multitasking today. I'm having making toast. Having a little breakfast and um, recapping the day. Um, in the morning we met, uh, actually we, first day back on feet, walking day. We walked uphill almost the entire day. Some really steep parts. And we absolutely loved it. Fantastic. It was so good to be on our feet again. In the morning, we were walking with um, James from Scotland and Kai. No, I'm from Northern from, Ireland. Yeah. But I'm from Northern Ireland. Kind of had connections all over Britain, but he was from Northern Ireland. And. Tied from Connecticut, just graduated high school, he's 18 years old, and you're doing a Camino with his dad. Pretty cool. Anybody who does a Camino with their dad is lame. <laughs> <laughs> Sucker. Anyways, we walked uphill two hours, smooth incline, it got steeper during the day. We really charged, it made good time, stopped and had breakfast at a little place, a little old lady. Serving up different breakfasts and whatnot, mostly bocadillos and tortilla and stuff like that. Had a really good bacon, cheese, and fresh tomato bocadillo or a little sandwich on a baguette, right? And they kind of slather olive oil over the baguette first. It was so tasty. And we had a fresh squeezed orange juice. It was also very yummy. <coughs> and then we kept on walking for another couple hours, did another six miles. Um... Stopped to get a drink at a place, talked to a guy from Spain named uh, Benito, or Benny, from Barcelona, and he was teaching me a lot about the different cultures from the different region of Spain. It was really fun talking to him. This is Fresh Squeeze OJ that we got at a little market. Most markets have a machine that you can get Fresh Squeeze OJ from, and it's it's the oranges are in season, so the orange juice right now is, is super it's good. It's so delicious. Mm. Yeah, that's good. So, Benito was giving me a lesson, and then another guy came out from the bar that we had stopped at, and he was kind of filling in some of the blanks that for the local area. He was Wait, what were they a giving local, a lesson on? Just the local, just the local culture, because we you cross over the next um, several days, we're gonna cross over into several distinct um, cultural areas. So right now, we're in the Maragata area then we'll be in the the bierso the berciano culture and then we'll go into the galician culture and there are all these little pockets that you know over the last two thousand years as spain has been conquered reconquered and reconquered again by you know whether it was romans visigoths um uh, muslims or um christians spanish christians again these areas were relatively untouched, so their culture is distinct from, uh, pretty distinct from the rest of Spain. Like, one of the cool things right here in the Maragata zone, and we saw this because all day long we were walking along paths that had, you know, shale stones um, sticking out of the ground. And all the roofs in this area, they're not tile roofs like everywhere else that we've seen in Spain, they're, they're, they're slate roofs, right? Made from this stone and it's really, they're, it's a really cool looking area. So anyways, they were telling us a lot about the different cultures and what we could expect to see and some of the things that we should try to eat, which um, we're looking forward to. But one of the things they kept recommending in a couple days, we'll enter the, the, into the Bierzo region and they have a kind of like a haggis, a Spanish haggis-like thing called botillo, where they take a pig, part of the intestine of the pig, and stuff it with different meats and whatnot, like red meat and other things. It's kind of like a, like I said, a Spanish haggis. So we might be trying that in a few days if we can find it, along with some cabrales, a, a kind of blue cheese here in Spain that Rico Chico Gubernick was telling me about. I had no idea what it was. Now I've heard it from a couple different people over here, so. Anyways, and of course, pulpo, octopus, like it's a big Galician dish, so we're looking forward to trying that. And we some already ate morcilla. squid, so we're prepared. Yeah, we are prepared. So, anyways, um, and then we got to our albergue. We had another four miles or so, and we hit our albergue.
did our normal routine, got washed up, cleaned up, all that stuff, and we went down and we we're gonna go look for some dinner. And we met our old friends from like day zero, like the day before we started Camino. Uh, Rosa and Des from Australia, from Adelaide, Australia. We sat down and talked with them, had a really nice visit. They filled us in on a bunch of different things they've been doing. They've been all over Europe. To, uh, they they come out all the time to Europe and whatnot. So it was it was cool. They were just telling about some of the places that we're going to go after Camino and what some of the things we should look at. And um, they were highly recommending that we go to Ronda in southern Spain and Andalusia, which our friend Ken Huffman, Ken Chubagi, also um, lives in that area and is, is taking my brothers there and he wants to take us there too. So I think we'll probably go to Ronda. Anyways, had a nice visit with them. Then we went and found dinner right next door, even though, well, forgot the guy. Tell him about that guy in that. Oh my gosh, he was so scary. Like he was talking to somebody and we started walking up the street and all of a sudden he like stops his conversation and like gets up and like walks over to us and he's like, guys, guys, you have to come into this albergue. Um, which like doesn't happen like people don't advertise your albergue like you just walk in and he was like I've been working here for a week He's like I'm not even getting paid. You have to stay here. And he was like we have hot showers We have really nice hot showers. He said that like seven times I'm getting you uncomfortable did. about the shower <laughs> and he was like come inside and look look at it And it wasn't like that great of an albergue honestly in my opinion He's like it's amazing and he's like and if you want to take off your shoes go upstairs we got great showers great showers like hot showers and then he also lied and said we're the only place in town that serves dinner. You're gonna have to come back You're here anyway. You're gonna have anyways. to come back here anyways. You, you might else. as well just stay here because you can eat here. But I was uncomfortable because I was like, why are you talking about the shower so much? Why do you want us to take a shower? Yeah, it was but weird. So then we left and <laughs> I just, dad was trying to ignore him, but I was like, ah! <laughs> I just yeah, people. men got drawn in. Uh, it was, it was... I was like not trying to be, he was so aggressive. And he kept telling us, I'm not BSing you. I'm not BSing you. Like this is the best place in town. And my dad, he said, if somebody says they're not Somebody BSing. tells you you're BSing you, they're not BSing you, they're BSing you. Someone tells you, oh, don't worry. Uh, you can trust me. <laughs> it's like red flag. So, anyways, uh, that was funny. But we went to this restaurant next door to our albergue called La Taverna Gaia. And and this was a really small town, by the way. This was um, Fonse Badon. And it really is just pretty much exists. It's just maybe 10 houses. Everything there is in some way supporting pilgrims. So, But this restaurant was awesome. We had this charcuterie board with some local cheese on it that was all the meats were some of the best ones we've had they had a uh, their cured ham was good their salchichon which is like a, sal a spanish salami was good and they had the chorizo which was also very good and they had one that i hadn't tried before but it's like ham made from beef instead of pig a, a cured beef and i can't remember the exact name but these are ready. Yeah, they I've, look they look pretty good. Men's I never made to, uh, sunny side up eggs before, but yeah, that's all that they make here, they make so I wanted here, to try so. and make them. Do they look like they're done on top? I don't know. That's the thing. I can't tell. Maybe a little longer on top. Mm -hmm. I can't tell. You know, you even put a little plate or a lid over the thing. It'll kind of help. The, um, yeah. So, anyways, uh, yeah, the restaurant was awesome. Charcuterie board, so good. We had a cream of pumpkin soup with cheese little chunks of the local cheese in it also and super it reminded good. me of when tony pemberton made me squash soup and i was the only one in the whole family who liked it because it's an inside joke you don't get it you're totally kissing butt to tony pemberton but that's okay <laughs> i'm sure tony per appreciates it she does nobody else um, though. and then we had these ribs that they roasted and then they boil them with vegetables for a little while or, or in a stew really with these potatoes that were awesome and then they finish them on the plancha or on the grill uh they were you want two? excellent ribs one's good enough and then um then we also had some veal some roasted veal oven roasted veal that was also really good so we had a really nice dinner to finish the day oh, and the crazy thing is it's just this really amazing restaurant out in the middle of nowhere of a town of less than 50 people you want people. a toast dad Yes. Uh, no, I just want some breast slices of bread. So anyways, that was our day 15. Did we miss anything, man? No. Do you want the butt? I love the butt. The heel. Here. Yes, please. Awesome. So that's our day 15. Um, if you want to see videos and stuff like that, again, just go to our Instagrams, uh, underscore mental Wilcox and uh, Wilcox AP, or you can go to men's TikTok if you like TikTok and see her stuff on Menta gets around. So, all right, see you guys tomorrow.